right, Joe? Mm, yeah, this is... Okay, so here's the second one. Um, wow, y'all. Um, I have notebooks and I have notes and they're just all over the damn place because I'm all over the place. So, this is how we're going to do it. Until I can get a few things sorted out, I'm just going to let the story unfold itself. Okay. So, where we left off is... Um, <laughs> I feel my life is at full circle. I have come back to living in a tent, but under totally different circumstances. <laughs> because um, my first journey through a tent, I was in my addiction. So I literally had no idea what day it was, who I was, where I was, what was happening. I, that's just, I'm, that's being real. I, I literally, my body was here going through the motions, but my brain and my spirit have pretty much died, I would say. Um, but that's when my rebirth happened, was December 28th of 2002. I asked for a new life. I asked for a new beginning. And he gave me that. So, um, <laughs> my Heavenly Father blessed me with um, what I asked for. I asked to sit still, get to know Him better, a one on one relationship with just me and Him, so that I can figure out how to fix my life because I had totally ruined it from my addiction. Um, so I took advantage of that time in, in the resort. <laughs> it's a prison. Okay, yeah, the state resort. Yeah. That was not a vacation I would have signed up for initially, but it is what it is. And I I am grateful for the program because I know for me the way that I took advantage of the program and the time to sit still to build my relationship with my higher power gave me the tools and the ability to become the survivor who would unfold, unfold into a warrior. I'll explain that. Um, for me, um, my life has gone through stages. Just like everyone else, I, I'm no different. Let me start there. I'm no different from anyone else. Everyone else just, we all experience things and, and respond to life's situations differently. So this is just how I handled things and how I got through what I went through. Jeez. My beginning, when I asked to be removed from that lifestyle of addiction, the street life, the homeless life, living in a tent, eating out of a dumpster, dressing out of the trash can, taking baths in the bathroom at a laundromat, gas station, wherever I could, um, you know, even outdoors, it's just, it is what it is. It was my journey. And when I first embarked on this part of my journey, I bought this land in hopes of a home. So things went south due to my previous lifestyle, my 25 years of addiction, I did quite some damage to my credit and my ability to um, hmm, purchase things like a normal person, okay? So, what I'm doing now is another form of rebuilding. I'm starting over, but this time... I realized 
I'm starting my mending journey where I left off, where I asked to be fixed. So when I said that my life was in stages, I went from a victim who was an addict from very young, but the root of my addiction came from childhood traumas and abuse, um, not on my mother's part. My mother was very loving. I will tell the story of my mother's later because that is a beautiful story to hear. And I'm very grateful for both my mothers. Um, but in my first early years, um, I went through a lot of traumas, which triggered into my addiction, which made me what I felt a victim, a victim of abuse, uh, of addiction, because I fell into it very hardly, because I lacked the coping skills to deal with life on life's terms. That's another story. So after I did the victim thing, I went to prison and became and worked myself into survivor. I began to heal things. I began to work on myself, my family, my children's relationship. That is still a work in progress because I did extensive damage. Um, they've forgiven me, but I still have. Ooh, that's a hard one. Sorry. That one's still hard. That is my hardest roadblock. For me. Failing so badly there. It's still a day-to-day -day thing for me. Um, I'm not quite yet a warrior there, but I am a warrior in a lot of things. And what I mean by that is after you've done survival, been a survivor so long, you've worked and worked and healed and healed, you begin to, well for me, this is how I see it. You go from victim to survivor to warrior. You start out a victim, you're in this you know, you haven't even begun on the healing, then you go to Survivor, you've worked on some healing, you've gotten all that under your belt, you're starting to spread your wings, or, or at least know they're there and acknowledge them, and you're beginning to do the mending part, okay? And then you get to Survivor. And for me, what that means is that you go from I'm fixing things to, I don't know how to put this to y'all, other than to say for me, the survivor is the one, the one who is still working. A warrior is one who fights these battles. This is, this is harder than I thought, y'all. Shit! Ooh. I'm trying not to cut y'all. I'm, I'm really... You start out as a victim. You go through healing stages to survivor. Then you come a warrior in your wings spread and you have the ability to spread your wind up underneath another person's wings that's mending giving them ability to spread them and get fly I hope that makes sense because that's how it feels to me I was a victim and I 
I played the poor me, poor me, poor me, feel sorry for me, and my life is this and my life is that. Nobody's going <laughs> to... Nobody loves me, and I'm so, you know, and I, I'm sorry I did this. Okay. I'm sorry I did those things. If I've ever wronged you, I'm sorry. I am genuinely sorry. I'm, I'm serious. If I've ever wronged you, disrespected you, or crossed the line in any way, inappropriately or whatever, I'm sorry. Those are never my intentions. I, I never set out to be cruel or disrespectful or harmful or rude. Um, I can be rude sometimes. I'm not going to let me take that part back because I have, I have a rude streak, y'all. And it's, it's just... I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress just like you. So, for me, I had to, I am rolling in to my warrior phase. That's where I feel I'm at now. And I had to, I feel for me, I had to come full circle to remember where I was what I went through to tell this story to share this journey so I don't I don't approve of the retent thing okay just put that out there I don't approve of the re going backwards but it is what it is so I'm making the best of it I am grateful for those that have helped um, helped us out along the way but um, the weird thing is, even though now that I'm in a tent again, under totally different circumstances, I'm not, I'm not afraid of what's to come, if that makes sense. It's like my fear has it's it's there. It's always there. It's human nature. But it hasn't got the power that it used to have. Fear used to run my life. I'm not lying. Fear used to run my life um, and it turned me into a chameleon um, I became a chameleon and that's a story that will blow you away because that is actually what I'm working on now currently is to have take back my identity be me confident in who I am and comfortable with me and not worry so much about how it affects others in a way that they lash back negatively. I've had to cut off a lot of people recently for that because some people say, telling your story, oh my God, you're telling your business. No, I'm not telling my business. <laughs> There's a difference between a testimony and out here just straight out bashing people. I'm not doing that. I'm telling you what happened to me, and I'm telling you how I got out of it. I, I, don't, I don't think at any point I'm actually going to talk about another individual unless they're present and they have partaken in the, in the situation. But I don't see that happening. So I am very confident in telling my story. And I do expect negativity as I always have in life. Always. Always. That has been the biggest thing in my life is when I do things, it's always been a negative backlash. I'm not sure if that's just because it's coming from individuals that 
are fully aware of my past and who I was and what I was like or those that don't know me really I don't know it, it's, it's a lot of things it could be in me I don't know don't really care it's just I feel like this needs to be done and it's my time to tell it and if I had to come full circle because I kept putting it off and this is God's way because I kept saying, give me a space to do it. Well, he gave me a space, all right, they gone it. I had my own land, my own privacy to sit out here in my yard and talk all kind of crazy craziness. And nobody's going to hear me but y'all. Because, <laughs> but I would like a house. Can, can you get some shelter? So, with that being said, um... I'm gonna make more it's just I'm really scatterbrained right now I'm not gonna lie I'm, mm, I'm trying to get a series going but I also am a very strong advocate for abuse mental health and addiction and I have a gala coming up that I was asked to so I'm preparing for that and that's taking a lot more time than I thought because I mean, I'm I'm not sure what a gala is like, y'all. I'm just gonna keep it real. I ain't never been there, so new experience, new me, new journey, new path, new everything. This is a new start, and I I'm grateful for it. I don't know if this story made any sense at all. But I feel like this is where my story is supposed to start. It's where it ended. It is. It's where my addiction ended was in a tent. And to tell you that story, I guess God said, let me take you back there so you can remember it all. And you can share that story in its full form. And there you go. <laughs> Even though I'm in a tent today, I'm okay with it. I re except for these goddamn mosquitoes. I ain't lie. Okay. Okay, it's time to go in, y'all, because I I don't do bugs, and they're they're coming out. So I'll be back. Give me a couple of days. I'll make another one. If you could leave something in the comments, something you want to hear about, something you want to know about. But I think my next story is going to tell you my parents, who my parents are. Because that was a journey that my life took two different turns that I'm very grateful for. Thank you.